Peace be with you and welcome all to this program. Today it's a privilege that I have with me His Lordship Bishop Joseph Alessandro. He is a Maltese Capuchin who is the Bishop of Garissa in Kenya. Welcome, Your Lordship. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. So, Your Lordship, you are originally from uh, Malta, a very tiny island in the heart of the Mediterranean, which was privileged to have St. Paul over to the island. And just as he came as a missionary, sometimes Christians left the island to become missionaries, and you were one of them. Yes, in fact, uh, I, left for, I was born in Malta, and uh, yes, I joined the Capuchin Franciscans, uh, when I was almost 17 years old at the time, uh, we used that to join very early. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then I always felt something inside me that uh, was telling me, why don't you go to the missions, no? When time came and the opportunity came, I asked and uh, permission was granted. It was in 1989 that I went for the first time to Kenya. There was uh, in the Diocese of Garissa, which was headed by His Lordship, Monsignor Paul Darmanin, also a Capuchin from Malta. And I used to work uh, there in his, uh, in his place. There were other Capuchin Maltese working there and even in various parts of Kenya. So, yes, it was my first experience in 1989. Then you returned back to Malta yes. after you had an accident? Yes, where after you... four years I had to come back for medical treatment because uh, during one of the uh, traveling I was doing, no, I, I was shot. At, so I had to have an intensive uh, care first in London and then in Malta. And then I stayed for quite some time in Malta. They gave me some other ministries in Malta. Uh, one of them was as a secretary for the missions from Malta, so I maintained my contacts with the, our missionaries in Kenya. And later on, yes, I was uh, appointed as provincial, so as provincial I felt I had to go to Kenya to visit even the brothers. Then when my term elapsed, I asked my, uh, my successor no, to grant me permission to go back to work in Kenya. It was in 2010 that I went. And after some time, you were appointed then the Bishop of Garissa. When was that? Yes, after two years, uh -huh, it was in June, I was appointed uh, as the co editor Bishop of Garissa. And then when did you start to lead the diocese as the actual bishop? And then after three years, yes, the, my predecessor reached the canonical age of 75, so he had to, to retire and automatically Yes, I entered uh, to continue uh, the ministry as a bishop of the Diocese of Garissa. So the Diocese of Garissa, how would you describe Garissa and the Diocese of Garissa? Okay. So let's start with Garissa. Garissa, you mean the town I mean, of the town Garissa? The town is the whole big place, no? <laughs> yes. Uh, Garissa is situated in the northeastern part of Kenya, which uh, borders with Somalia on the east, and with Ethiopia at the north. It's a vast territory, the whole diocese. It's 145,000 square kilometers, which is very vast, but most of it is semi-desert. And the population, uh, the majority are uh, of the Muslim faith, Islamic faith, and uh, the Christians are very few. Christians, I mean Catholics and uh, various denominations so, as Protestants, Anglicans, Methodists and others, I think they are only 2% in that area. So, uh, in the diocese, it has seven parishes, but they are scattered and very far one from the other. The m furthest one that is uh, in the northern part is about 800 kilometers from where I am from Garissa. So it's a long way. Uh, sometimes it takes me even time to reach there. But yes, I try to, uh, to visit all these places 
to see and to encourage the missionaries, the, that is the fathers, the sisters, the lay uh, Catholics who are committed also with the church, to encourage them to move on. How uh, many parishes have you got in diocese and how many priests and religious you have uh -huh, ministering in uh -huh. your own diocese? Uh -huh. uh, as priests, both diocese and, and religious, there are 17 uh, religious, female religious sisters, there are 15 who are in four communities. Mm -hmm. And how many parishes would the diocese Parishes, it has seven dioceses. Uh, seven parishes. And seven one seven <laughs> parishes, yes, sorry. <laughs> seven parishes, yes. Some are rather big, others are uh, small, no? Compared to... So, you, Your Lordship, you explained to us that you're uh, quite a minority as Catholics mm -hmm. within a, a larger mm -hmm. Muslim population. How would you describe the relationship between Christians and Muslims in your territory? Oh, we have very good relationship there. Uh, there are, I can say, two types of Muslims. No? Those in the north, they belong to the Somali tribe. Those to the south, they belong to other tribes. So the Somali tribe, uh, they are very faithful to, to their uh, believing. So uh, it, it, we try to work with them uh, to assist them in their needs. We have even uh, interreligious dialogue and interfaith dialogue to maintain good relations. And the good relations, uh, I see that they are uh, bearing fruit. For example, when we have some uh, institutions like schools, and clinics and health centers, they are open for everyone. No? And uh, since the majority are Muslims, so the majority of those who come to these institutions are even of Islamic faith. We have no problems with them, we respect them, and, and they, on their side, they respect us. No? A, a disadvantage is that there are some groups like uh, terrorist groups know that the mistake is that people identify these groups with the religion no so some people they generalize but it's not the case in fact I was the, even the muslims themselves know they dissociate themselves, themselves from, from these groups yes. in fact i was trying to ask you because your ISIS garista has brought mm -hmm. was brought up to the international attention mm -hmm. and international media mm -hmm. after we had the massacre in front of the university mm -hmm. which is quite nearby if i'm yes, not mistaken yes. to your cathedral it's very close so mm -hmm. can you just recall it with those memories how you have lived them and what happened mm -hmm. afterwards oh yes uh, it was really terrible it was on holy thursday uh, in the morning we heard some gunshots from our place. Then we heard a big movement of police cars and ambulances. You know? And what we knew was only that the university was attacked by the Al-Shabaab. But no one knew what was happening inside. So the Al-Shabaab are the terrorist groups that yes, attacked uh -huh, the university. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Which are uh, Somali origin but have infiltrated even in some parts of Kenya, especially in our part. Then in the evening, we got the news what had happened, you know? the number of deaths, it was 148 uh, young students you know, who were shot. And it was a big shock for everyone, even for the Muslims themselves. You know? And since it was Holy Thursday, then there were the functions of Holy Friday, and then Easter Eve and Easter. So the first days, the church, very few people came because then they put the curfew, the government. But on Sunday, that is Easter Sunday, many people came. The cathedral was full because we had even prepared for baptisms. So they came even with their young children for baptism. And as you said, it was uh, on an international media. So many media houses were in Garissa, international media houses. So on Sunday, 
they came even to our church, they interviewed some people, no, even myself, and many of them, they remained there for the whole mass, no, to see how it is, uh, how things will be going. I think it was a very good witness to those who were following this media, even outside Kenya, that uh, our people, our Catholic faithful, no, they are uh, convinced of their faith, they are not all that afraid, so if they have to come to church, no, they came. And in fact, some of these media people, when they were interviewing them, asking them whether they are, were afraid to come, some, as they said, if we have to die uh, by this group, no, it's better to die in the church than on the road or in our houses. That is a real witness of Catholic faith in the persecuted areas. Yes. So after all this, after the aftermath of this, have the Catholic, the small Catholic community, has it come out stronger? Has it retrieved? What, no, what was the no. aftermath of it? Uh, even the leaders of the Muslims, no, they came to our place, no, uh, to show their solidarity with us. Uh, saying that they were sorry for what had happened, they uh, didn't agree what this group was doing and uh, sometimes is still doing. So they dissociate themselves from this group, no? They said their motive is not exactly a religious motive, but there are other, other motives. Yeah. Behind Violence in the name of uh, God is no, not accepted. Exactly. So they came to our compound, uh, the imams uh, and the sheikhs, uh, so to show solidarity. Then afterwards, yes, I think people, people have moved out, some of them, no? Uh, they went uh, either to other places or even beyond uh, Garissa to another village where they felt they were safer there. But still, they used to come to Mass uh, in our church. Now the situation is uh, very, very much better, no? In fact, many people came back and even more people came, no? Now the situation is back to normal. Even the government with the security forces, no? He, he, he is trying to maintain, yes, this stability because it affects even the social living and the, uh, and the progress of, of the area and also of the country. So we are thankful even to the government for taking this issue seriously, for providing security. Uh, the government is still providing security during Sunday masses uh, to, so that even the people, the Christians, even the Protestants will go to church with uh, their mind at rest. We know that His Holiness Pope Francis has followed closely mm -hmm. this reality at Garissa mm -hmm. and even in your meetings with mm -hmm. him, I'm, we know that was a, a subject of discussion. Can you just relate with us this oh, encounter yes, with the Holy Father? It happened at this event of the university. It happened about two weeks before we, as a conference of bishops of Kenya, were invited to Rome to meet the Pope. The bishops are invited every five years to go and uh, meet the Pope. The Pope will talk to them, no? And it, it happened to be so close, so uh, the Pope, uh, yes, as soon as he's, we introduced ourselves from every bishop from his own diocese, no? When we came to Garissa, no? He, he stopped there, you know, asking how is the situation now after two weeks, and he showed much interest in the Church of Garissa. No? And even later, when he came to visit Kenya, again, when he met us and uh, we introduced ourselves, ourselves, yes, when uh, we were there, Bishop, his Lordship Bishop Paul Damani and myself, no? So he recalled, yes, uh, Garissa attached to that event, no? It's beautiful and he, to feel the close. us some words of, of encouragement. encouragement. Uh -huh. It's beautiful to see the closeness of the yes. Holy Father with uh -huh. you uh -huh. in uh, these particular uh -huh. situations. Because the church in Kenya is made up of many dioceses. Uh, there are 
25 dioceses and there is the military also ordinate. So we, we are a big church in Kenya. Uh, the Catholics are about 28-30% of the whole population. About another 30 or 40 percent, they are the other Christians, other denominations. Then there are the various religions, even the animists, they are the natural religion of, of Kenya, and even the Muslims. The Muslims are about 10 or 11 percent in the whole of Kenya. Kenya. And most of them, they are in, in the Diocese of Garissa. What are the main ministries of the Catholic Church in the Diocese mm -hmm. of Garissa? Yes, we are trying to, yes, to evangelize uh, using three main pillars, no? Education, so we try to reach the people through education, through health, we have some dispensaries and clinics, and even in emergencies, we try to see the needs of the people. When there is, let's say, a drought, or sometimes, on the contrary, there are floods, uh, the river uh, will flood the villages on the banks, so people lose all they have, even their huts and their houses. So we try through the development office of the diocese, it's called Caritas Garissa, which is linked even with Caritas Kenya, with Caritas International, so it's a, a means how we can get some help and support to assist these people. As a Maltese Capuchin missionary bishop, mm. throughout all your years of presence and of contact, because even when you weren't present in Kenya, you mm. still remained mm -hmm. in contact with Kenya. What is the beauty of the Kenyan people and of the Kenyan Catholics? Oh yes, from the first time I went there, no, I noticed that there are various values which we are losing here, no, in in the Western Excellent. world. No? I I was struck by the value of the family, the unity of the family, even the extended family. It was something very nice that I noticed. Then the value within the family, value for life. They love and they like children very much and the, the value of uh, sharing even if you go the first time there no maybe they don't know you very much but they share what they have this value of sharing even the value of let's say of faith being a muslim being a, a, a christian or catholic all of them they have the sense of god in their life and everything that happens, they go through, yes, they always mention God as the one who is leading. And this uh, struck me a lot. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the people in Kenya are very religious. Either one faith or another, but they are religious. The sense of God is still ingrained uh, yes, in the hearts yes, of men. Even when you hear them speaking, you know, they always mention God. Even uh, people in high position and even politicians know while they speak they mention God we thank God for this we thank God for that so it's all it's part of their life now through the work of the church in Kenya through NGOs through government have you seen Kenya progressing oh yes throughout the years you've been there from the first time I went there in 89 up till today no I notice a lot of progress, especially in infrastructure, roads, I mean electricity, although not everywhere, but uh, it has been uh, a big development. Even uh, water, clean water, although some villages they still have to go and fetch water, but it's increasing the facility of having uh, clear water. And then even health. And the government, I was working on, on for big issues, no education, housing, health, uh, and uh, development 
in various uh, stages. No? So, uh, yes, uh, I think Kenya is uh, very blessed by God, besides the beauty of nature, uh, there is a, a lot of human resource. People are well prepared for the society. The only thing is that they don't find enough places for work. No? So after finishing higher studies and universities, they have to struggle to find a job. But I, I am confident that by time, yes, even these uh, planning of the government will help to have more jobs and that means more progress. Earlier on, your lordship, you mentioned that in Kenya there are about 25 dioceses and the military mm -hmm. ordinate. Mm -hmm. So that would put you also within the Episcopal Conference, mm -hmm. you know, which we know is a very active conference in Kenya through yes. the work of the cardinal, but also because you different bishops have different roles within the conference. So can you just ec explain to us a little bit how the, conf the Episcopal Conference in Kenya works, what are your main agendas, and perhaps what is your specific role or roles which you have had throughout the years being a bishop part of this conference? Yes, as a college of bishops, yes, uh, we meet uh, three times a year, that's uh, fixed on the agenda, then when there is need, we meet also. But besides this, within the conference, there are many commissions, various commissions that are headed by two bishops, each commission. There are about 14, uh, 15, 16 commissions. Uh, they are headed by the chairman, should be a bishop, and even the vice chairman. Let's say commission for education, commission for health, commission for migrants and refugees, commission for missions, there are various commissions. And each commission, it has an office uh, and uh, its own program to follow. Yes, so since there are all these commissions, every bishop is in charge either directly of a commission or as a vice chairman of another commission, commission. sometimes both. A bishop could be the chairman of one commission and the vice chairman of, of another one. commission. Taking my, my example now, uh, three years ago I was the chairman for the commission of refugees, migrants and people of the road and I was vice chairman for the commission for missions. Last year we had the elections, every three years we had the elections and I was asked to chair the Commission of Missions. So uh, it entails a lot of work, a lot of even traveling, to go to visit even other dioceses, to animate the mission spirit in Kenya. What are the main challenges, especially when you are responsible for migrants and refugees? What are the main challenges that this area is facing in Kenya? Yes, if we talk about refugees, there are two main big refugee camps. One is in the Diocese of Garissa, it's called Dadab. It's about 100 kilometers from the border of Somalia. And another one in another diocese close to a border to Ethiopia and South Sudan. Yes, the one in Garissa Mainly, they are refugees from Somalia because of the war there. Eh? And uh, up till three years ago, it was the largest refugee camp in the world. There were more than half a million. But now the number has reduced because uh, the attack at the university and other terroristic attacks uh, in the country were attributed to this refugee camp, uh, the people there now were planning for these attacks. But no one can confirm. Recently, there was an attack on a hotel in Nairobi, and yes, it was confirmed that those who planned it, they were there in the refugee camp. So the government uh, had decided to close this camp, but it's not easy because there is even the United Nations involved in it, but many, uh, the number reduced a lot. 
because those who were not from Somalia, they, uh, they are still being transferred to the under refugee camp, no? They are still there, no? And uh, some people opted to go back to Somalia. They were assisted even financially by the United Nations. But some people, they don't trust to go back. So now the number is about 140,000. What is the there. role of the Catholic and, Church in yes, all this? We go there, no, to visit them for the those who are Catholics, no, because we cannot interfere with the other religions. So there is a father who goes regularly, almost every month, to celebrate Mass, both for the refugees and even for the Catholic staff, because the staff there is, is, comes from other parts of Kenya, and amongst them there are some Catholics. So we go there to, to support them, to celebrate Mass, and to assist them spiritually. The other camp, mostly they are from South Sudan, where there are many Catholics there, no? From Eritrea, also from Burundi, Rwanda, and those other parts. And it's a big camp. Uh, as I said, there are many Christians and many Catholics there, no? In fact, inside the camp, there is a parish which is run by the Salesians of Don Bosco. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that is in another diocese, not in the diocese of Garissa. So our main task with the refugees is to assist them spiritually. I know that even there are some religious uh, organizations in Nairobi who go there regularly to assist in the education, to put uh, a good structure for education so that they prepare teachers there from going up in their education so that they could teach then the children that are in the refugee camp because there are many, many children in the refugee camp. And they are, are even part of the system of education in Kenya. In fact, when there are the national exams, no, even there they sit for these national exams. No? And some they perform quite well. And what no? about the Commission of Missions, which now you're responsible for? Oh, the Commission of Missions. What is the same objective? What do you do? Yes, the same to assist and help in to first of all to animate our Catholics that uh, a missionary is not only the one who comes from abroad, is not only the one who is different in color, but everyone through his baptism is a missionary. As Pope Francis says, all of us are called to be missionary disciples. Yes. We cannot just be disciples of Jesus, but we're called missionary, to be missionary missions. disciples. And we try to instill this, uh, this teaching, this idea, even in the children. Uh, there is the missionary childhood, which is very active in Kenya. Every parish, it has its own group of missionary children. And uh, the, there are people in charge of these children, both on the diocesan level and even in the parish level. So these children, uh, they are uh, uh, enrolled in the holy childhood, it's called, no? And even the collection that they do, it goes to Rome, and then Rome subsidizes uh, uh, projects in every diocese uh, which cater for children. So we try to instill the spirit even in the children amongst themselves to help even other children. Let's say uh, there were cases when uh, there were some children who had no father, they were living with only their mother, no? It was a single parent. She passed on, she died. So the other children supported these children, no? They collected even food items and some clothes, and they took them to these children. Even when they know that there is someone sick, they go and visit the sick. So they try to be missionaries in their own way as children, which will help that is a very, lot. That no? is very beautiful. And uh, now in the diocese, like the other dioceses, we have a coordinator for this, uh, it's a sister. So in every parish, when there will be the enrollment for this, she invites me 
I go and enroll these children. I carry with me rosaries. I distribute the rosaries. Yes. So they feel even part of the church. One well, final question, Your Lordship. You're the fourth Maltese Capuchin Bishop in Kenya. Can you just share with us about the presence of the Capuchin Order in Kenya mm -hmm. and the other three Capuchin Bishops which mm -hmm. we have had in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Let's start with the last uh, question. No? About the other Capuchin uh, Bishops uh, from Malta, yes, there is still Bishop Paul Darmani who is retired now, he is in Malta. He served as a bishop for more than 32 years in Garissa. It's not a joke um, being for all those years in that hardship area. Then the diocese was so big that he asked that part of it will be cut and form another diocese. And in fact, in the year 2000, or the Jubilee year, no, uh, the southern part uh, was uh, uh, was installed as a, a new diocese of Malindi. And uh, yes, uh, po the Pope uh, nominated a Capuchin Maltese friar who was one of the first missionaries who went in 1964, Monsignor Francis Maldacchino, as the first bishop of Malindi. Yes, he he passed away after nine years, as he was a bishop, no? So uh, he had to be followed by another bishop. And the Pope nominated again a Maltese Capuchin bishop, Monsignor Emmanuel Barbara, who spent many years in Kenya uh, teaching uh, the university theology and even assisting so many religious congregations and communities for retreats and counseling, so he was well known in Kenya. So the Pope nominated him as the second bishop of, of Malindi, Malindi, who passed on a year ago. Now Malindi is still without a bishop. There is the administrator there waiting for a bishop. Yes, now I am the fourth one. I am succeeding Bishop Paul Darmanin, as I said before, no? I was first co-editor, then I became the ordinary. And the Capuchins in Kenya? No, the Capuchins in Kenya, yes, they started uh, to recruit uh, young Kenyans uh, as Capuchins to have formation to become uh, Capuchin friars. Uh, some years back, uh, the one who started them was Father Pelagio Beloka. He was also a Capuchin, Maltese Capuchin. He passed away about a month ago. And uh, yes, since then, they continue to grow in number. And now they are more than the Capuchins that are in Malta. Yes, it's a big number. They are, uh, yes, serving in Kenya in various dioceses and parishes on the West and uh, almost everywhere. Yes, they are uh, very much appreciated by uh, the Kenyan people. They, uh, yes, they are very close to them and they support them. So this is how the Holy Spirit works in the church, no? We're from small things, the Holy Spirit can germinate uh, fruits which bear much fruit, uh, trees that bear much fruit. So this is a reality which we saw with our eyes how the Capuchin Order was growing in Kenya. And, and with uh, that they need even our prayers and sometimes even our support. And with that comment, I would like to thank you for being here with us oh. for this interview. We really thank God you spoke about the fruits and that's mm -hmm. the most beautiful thing mm -hmm. because Jesus told us, John 15, mm -hmm. I have called you to bear fruit and to bear yes. much, much fruit. fruit. You know, and this is what brings glory to God the Father and what brings joy also to the church. We thank mm -hmm. you for who you are. We thank you for whatever you're doing, your Lordship. We promise you all our prayers. I thank you also for inviting me for this uh, interview. dialogue interview. So thank you very much. Thank God. So that was His Lordship, Bishop Joseph Alessandro, the Bishop of Garissa. He's a Maltese Capuchin who's been serving the diocese for now so many years. 
We thank God for him. We thank you for being there with us. We invite you to continue to pray for us and to support the church to continue to be a witness of Jesus Christ as he himself told us in Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Kelly, Samaria, and through the whole of the world. This is what the Catholic Church stands for. Jesus Christ who sends us to all nations. May God bless you all.